Viola. Hey, Pat. I, hey. <laughs> when I look through my patients' medical histories, pretty much everybody is on a med for anxiety. How does that impact my practice? Find out today on Medical History Mysteries. When I do a chart review every day to go through my list of patients that I'm seeing, pretty much, I'd say most of them, that's fair, most of them is on some sort of medication for anxiety. What does that mean for my practice and how does that change what I do with them? Well, this is a very important point because of the, I would say, mental health crisis we find ourselves in now post-pandemic. You know, isolation and, and being locked down did not do wonders for a lot of people's mental health. Uh, we lost the ability to socialize. We lost the ability to interact. It's taken us a long time to crawl out of that hole that this virus dug for us. And that means that some people still have trouble adjusting. And so a lot of people have anxiety or they have long COVID, uh, which means they have lingering systems from the, uh, symptoms from the virus that, that cause them anxiety as well. What to do for patients who have anxiety? So remember, uh, if your patient has anxiety, either generalized anxiety or panic attacks, remember that's not necessarily separate from depression. Some people can have anxiety and depression, and some people have depression with bouts of anxiety. And the really tricky part is sometimes the same medication is used to treat both. So we can use uh, antidepressants like Lexapro and Prozac and Zoloft to treat both depression and anxiety. Uh, and they're likely to cause not always, but likely to cause things like clenching. Uh, and clenching can be problematic because it can cause TMJ issues, myofascial pain. Uh, it can cause overdeveloped masseters and difficulty opening. And it can cause broken cusps and crowns and vertical fractures. But there are other medications, true anxiolytics, uh, like the benzodiazepines that are used to treat anxiety, but they can be habit forming. And ultimately, Xanax and, and uh, Ativan can affect not just your, your uh, mood and, and your anxiety, but also your overall mood for, for even a day or two later. Uh, and, and things like enterograde amnesia, um, sleepwalking, sleep talking, sleep disturbances. So th there's really no good way to treat anxiety other than this individualized approach where we try different agents to see what's causing the underlying anxiety first, so then we can treat it uh, more effectively and more appropriately. What can we do as dental professionals to help mitigate their risk for these at least oral side effects? So the most important thing I tell my students and anybody who's willing to listen to me is be kind to these folks and be the bartender. You know, I've learned a lot about being a bartender when I was working my way through school and I learned to, to how to listen and when to speak. And I say the same thing all the time. When, you know, a lot of these medications like antidepressants, anti-anxiety agents like Lexapro increase suicidal ideation. So all sometimes what people need is just someone to listen, right? So, so, so talk to them, l let them talk. They may not say stuff that they would say to their medical professionals, uh, their fa family members, their clergy people, but they might tell you things that they wouldn't tell anybody else because you're approachable and you're easy to talk to. But you got to open the window. You got to open that window with them and treat them like a family member and say, you know, I'm here for you. We're, you know, we're glad we got to talk for the next 45 minutes anyway. So what do you want to talk about? Let them get it out. Let them talk about it. Listen and then speak, you know, give them words of encouragement. Tell them you're not the only one who's been through this. Tell them sometimes it's a side effect in a medication and give them resources, give them the number for the uh, suicide prevention hotline. If they're transgender, give them the number for the Trevor Project, give them information that they, that they can use so that when they leave your office, you haven't just treated their oral health, you've improved their mental health to some degree, because that's sometimes all people need. It's just a, a shoulder, a, a voice, uh, a place to, to say the things they need to say to somebody. 
I think that's incredibly important. It's such great advice that, you know, we just sometimes need to sit back and listen to our patients. And it's amazing. You don't have to spend 35 minutes of your hour long appointment listening, but if you take a solid five minutes where they have a chance to really connect with you, all of a sudden, every next aspect of your appointment tends to go more smoothly. And I also think that they tend to be a little bit more open to your suggestions and your recommendations, especially when they hear that this is pretty common and a lot of people are experiencing this and they're certainly not alone and we're here for them. And I think that's a really great approach for us as well. Now, I can't not mention the risk for tooth decay. <laughs> because any sort of antidepressant, anti-anxiety med is going to increase one's risk for tooth decay. And if they're on more than one medication, that risk is amplified because the effects of xerostomia is amplified. So make a recommendation for a product that's going to help mitigate that risk. So something that will raise salivary flow, something that will fortify salivary flow, say a calcium and phosphate fluoride type um, paste or um, you know, some kind of additive, that kind of thing. A um, lot of great products out there, a lot of great recommendations. And I think that we're in an excellent position to not only keep their mouth healthy, but also keep our patients feeling good as well. And let's face it, whenever we make a difference in someone's patient life, life it, it improves our outlook on life too. You know, it gives us more uh, job satisfaction. It gives us a, a morale boost as well that we've had the ability to to do something good for somebody else because we all need that right now. And I agree with you that, you know, if the medications we use sometimes cause tooth decay. When you use multiple medications together concomitantly that all cause xerostomia, that increases that risk. So who better than the dental professional to look at the medical history and know that in advance, and that's just one less thing that person has to worry about in addition to whatever items are causing that cloud over their head, so to speak, you know, that, that, that anxiety and depression. So now they've got one less thing to worry about because you're helping them treat that problem in the first place. Yeah, and I think that keeping bruxism in the back of your mind is also key as well because such an easy thing to protect their teeth instead of waiting for a cusp to break off or an implant to fail. So definitely right. a really, really great suggestion there. Awesome, looking forward to doing more of these, Pam, because we, we fell behind a little bit, but now we're catching up and we're gonna keep doing more of these because we wanna make an impact on uh, our, our viewers' lives, like they make impact on their patients' lives every day. So thank you for the opportunity. Oh my gosh, thank you. And I know sometimes we kind of have a lull in time just because our schedules are tough, but Medical History Mysteries isn't going anywhere. We love Medical History Mysteries. So we will see you next week for another Medical History Mysteries. Thanks, Pam.